Well, hello there, and welcome to another Wine Steward video. As you can plainly see, the setting is different for this particular video because we want to reveal to you how much beautiful Thanksgiving-oriented wine we've amassed. And most of it is amassed here on this display. The first thing you see when you walk in the door and look to the left, after you've looked at our beautiful cheese cooler making all that noise over there, you will see a wide array of carefully selected Thanksgiving wines. What makes a Thanksgiving wine? <laughs> Pretty much anything in the store today is a great Thanksgiving wine. In other words, help us with our inventory, won't you? But we do have specific ideas about what really works well with Thanksgiving. Whether red, pink, or white, we like forward-fruited wines with Thanksgiving dinner. We like lower oaked wines or no oak wines. It just seems to work better with that whole carnival of flavors happening on the feasting table. So you will want to have a look at these wines, a, com a conversation with us, and a, uh, end up with a box full of beautiful things to enjoy with Thanksgiving dinner. So what I wanna tell you is that what we've done last week and this weekend and next weekend, the final weekend before Thanksgiving, is loaded our wine bar menu with many of these. We can't even cram them all onto the menus. We have more beautiful things, that damn fly. We have more beautiful Thanksgiving wines than we can squeeze onto our wine bar menus, even over the course of three weeks. So give me a listen right now so I can tell you about a couple of things that we can't get onto the menu that I really do highly recommend anyway. And I'm sorry for like, there's a lot to show you here. In fact, I should get out of the way and just show you how many great things are here. This, as soon as Eric gets here and a certain delivery gets here from Charles Neal, this is going to explode with even more great wines. But in the meantime, let's tell you that what we really love about the holidays and holiday feasting, and I think Thanksgiving dinner in particular, is you guys brave up. You somehow develop this courage, this sense of adventure. Like, you come in and ask us, what's going to work well with a meal? And show me something I've never heard of before. Here, you've never heard of this before, I don't think. Because I had never heard of it until earlier this week. Viray, Viray, I think is how you say it. Um, might be a Catalan word. I believe they speak some form of Catalan on the my island of Mallorca. Yes, these are two beautiful white wines from Mallorca. One is a... Um, a native grape, a grape native to the area called Prensal, and then the other one is a little better known, but not so well known, called Malvasia. And these are bright whites, no oak whites, fragrant, minerally, and they will do beautifully with a turkey and whatever, whatever else is going on on the table. So be adventurous, come check out these white wines from Mallorca we just brought. Now, yeah, how about a couple of more ideas? Um, I love this particular grape with Thanksgiving dinner, this white grape, which is arguably the most important white grape of the Rhone Valley of France, whether you're in the north or the south. Yeah, I know they got Viognier up there too, but Roussan is perhaps um, across those two areas of north and south Rhone. Roussan is, uh, it's got a little more body. It's got a beautiful nose. So it's like fruit cocktail nose. It's dry wine, but man, it's got just beautiful fruit. This is a great and fairly affordable Roussan. You're not paying Hermitage Blanc pricing here for this Roussan from Clouzel, a producer I mentioned in last week's video with respect to their gorgeous Coroti, of which I still have a couple of bottles. That would also be a great Thanksgiving wine, a beautiful, elegant, fruit-forward Coroti Syrah uh, would be great too from these guys. It costs a little more than this, but this Roussan, beautiful white wine for Thanksgiving. Sorry I can't squeeze it onto the menu. How about this? This should be on the menu. This is from the well-known producer, Jay Lohr, but maybe this wine is not as well-known to you. These guys have the courage, just like you should have the courage to try it, uh, to make a wine called Val de Guy, um, sometimes known as Napa Gamay, which is, it's not the Gamay grape. Val de Guy is its own thing. Fragrant, juicy, uh, probably no oak at all. This is, it acts kind of like Beaujolais in its uh, careless, happy, forward-fruited spirit. So check out the Val de Guy. They, I'm so impressed that they insist on making this. I insist on carrying it, and I think if you put a slight chill on it and put it on the Thanksgiving table, everybody's gonna love this wine. Affordable Valdeguy from J. Lore. Well done, guys. What else can we tell you? Man, you gotta see that cheese cooler. It is replete with good things. So come check that out and make sure you are welcoming your Thanksgiving guests with a beautiful cheese board first. It is certainly a day for gathering and eating like pigs, right? So. <laughs> Uh, get in on that cheese stuff over there. All uh, right, let's tell you about the wine bar menu. This is exciting. 
Um, what is cool about it is, well, actually, I'm gonna save the best for last, what I consider to be the best. Let's tell you about the red wine flight first. Yes, it's very, very good, and it goes all over the place. And um, again, Thanksgiving-oriented wines. Why? Because they have beautiful fruit. They're not over-made, they're not over-oaked. They just, <laughs> fragrant, make sure you smell your wine. Maybe get out Pinot Noir glasses for all of these. This is Grenache from Barossa Valley of Australia, and you might anticipate it being an overweight wine. It's anything but. It's fragrant, it's charming, it's crunchy. It is medium-bodied Grenache, uh, really properly made from an unlikely source of Barossa Valley, Australia, where historically wines have been made kind of veering toward the over-the-top style. Elegant, pretty, very nice Grenache. Really good with food. Uh, the next wine is a Syrah, and isn't it interesting that we're pouring Syrah so early in the flight? You would expect Syrah to be big. This one isn't. This is medium-bodied. This is called Winds of Change. It's a domestic or California Syrah. 60% of the fruit comes from Santa Barbara, the rest of it from other parts of the Central Coast, and it is elegant, fragrant Syrah that doesn't beat up the palate or the meal. This is cool. This is from Galicia, actually right next door to Galicia in León, uh, the subregion of Bierzo. Bierzo is the home of, you could say, it is the home of the grape called Mencia. So we don't put Mencia on the wine bar very often. We want you to know this wine. This is affordable and complex and beautiful, kind of mysteriously aromated. Is that a word? <laughs> anyway, it's got a really nice, intriguing quality that once again will be a great food wine. How about this? This is also something you don't go looking for, but we're here to show it to you. We did pour it down the street the other night at uh, a Sidetrack Bar and Grill, and uh, thank you so much, Todd, for hosting that wonderful event. Uh, and all 100 of you who attended, we sold that thing out quickly, and uh, I hope you all had a good time. Yeah, I hope you tried this Lagrine, and if you didn't, you can study it upstairs at the Wine Bar Mezzanine as part of the red wine flight on the wine bar menu. Lagrine is the red grape of Alto Adige in northern Italy. Fragrant, juicy, easy. It's dark, but it's not tannic, and it's not difficult. It is fun wine. Fun wine for Thanksgiving. The last wine, another irony, it, it may not be the darkest and richest wine on the flight, but it's certainly the, the prettiest, most beautiful. It does cost a little bit more, but these guys in the Santa Cruz Mountains nail it every time. This is Domaine Eden, which is kind of like the second wine of Mount Eden, same winery. Um, this is grown a little farther down in elevation, I believe, and costs less, and it is gorgeous Pinot Noir. Now, I told you I was very excited about the white flight, what we're doing on the wine bar. Actually, let me tell you quickly about what we're doing by the glass, because we always offer a few things by the glass. Sparkling wine of the week is from Rioja. I keep getting this in front of you because it is the most unique Spanish sparkling wine I've ever had. It's not called Cava. It's from Rioja, made by an uncle and a nephew, very nice people, Ramon and... Uh, Ah, shoot, forgetting the name. <laughs> but the Ayala family is behind this very small production, sparkling wine, based on the Garnacha Blanca grape. Uh, it is sparkling wine from Rioja, of all things. You ought to try it. De Obriga, complex stuff. I really like it. Speaking of Rioja, the rosé of the week, yes, we have one, is the very elegant, up a notch in price and up a notch in quality and elegance. I said elegant twice, but uh, this is two times elegance. Uh, Flor de Muga. Yes, this is by the Muga people. They make a less expensive rosé. This is their beautiful, hard-to-get one. Only a few six-packs come to California. We grabbed the rest of it. We took all that remained of this 21 vintage. 21, not 22. Uh, it's got a little development going on. It's not losing its fruit, but it just, because of a year, extra year in bottle, it's become a little enriched. This Flor de Muga is beautiful rosé. Have a glass of that. And a friend of mine who went to Rioja recently, this is by Jen and Tony Deluman over in Livermore. And this is Napa Valley Cabernet as made in Livermore. Um, they did a beautiful job. We're even gonna put this in the Red Collector Wine Club this month. Madison Cabernet Sauvignon, made in Livermore, grown in the Napa Valley. They especially emphasize uh, Rhone grapes. So that's what their main program is gonna be, making Grenache, Syrah, they grow Grenache. Well, their neighbor does right next door and they have uh, Syrah in their own vineyard along with Moved. And they obtain a little bit of Viognier from the Wente vineyards. And uh, they just wanna become known for a Rhone program. And speaking of that, I should have shown you in this video, I don't have the bottle near me, but we also have the Grenache on the shelf. What am I gonna do with that Grenache? I'm gonna represent it by one of these guys. 
So look around the store. In as much as we cannot fit all of our Thanksgiving wines onto this display, we will identify them all over the store, whether sparkling or rosé, international or domestic wine, with one of these funny looking turkey uh, things saying, this is a Thanksgiving wine, go for it. All right, so we're gonna put one of those signs under the Grenache from uh, Tony and Jen, how about that? So uh, look for that out there somewhere, okay? Go roaming uh, on your quest for Thanksgiving wines. Now, I have put it off long enough. Why am I wearing a yellow sweater? Why do you see yellow stuff all over the place? Why do you see this lineup of wines right here? Let's get in closer. Is this gonna work? Yeah, kinda. All these yellow labels represent one producer. Why? Because we're having Ugel Day on Saturday. Yes, these wines were already represented on this week's wine bar menu, but on Saturday we take it up a notch by providing anybody ordering this white flight from Alsace, from the Ugel, say Ugel, not Ugel, <laughs> they're not Germans, um, anyway, from Ugel, we are providing a flight of five wines, and on Saturday, if you speak for that flight, we throw in a bonus wine, which is very special. It's a 2014 Riesling, and you might say, oh boy, I don't like sweet wine. This is not sweet wine. This is 90-year-old dry Riesling. Grossi Laue is what they uh, subtitle it. Grossi Laue is kind of like saying Grand Cru. This is from the Schoenenberg Vineyard, just near the uh, village of Rikavir which is where Ugel does their stuff. And uh, so it's like Grand Cru Riesling dry in a half bottle. Uh, we bought a dozen of these. We were brave, are you? Um, so it, it is not inexpensive, but it is gorgeous and it's coming into its own. The, um, the Ugel family who has been making wine there, family owned still for 12 generations, uh, believes that their Grossolelli wines only start to come into their own after about eight years. So here we are, year nine. <laughs> Let's see if it's coming into its own. I had it yesterday, I believe it is. Anyway, along with a flight, you get this bonus pour. Along with a flight, you also get something that Eric and I are gonna whip up called choucroute. And we've done this before. If you've attended Bougel Day or Alsace Day, depending on what we're calling it every year, uh, before, we are uh, going to make um, a, a nice plate of choucroute for anybody participating. So uh, choucroute is basically a combination of potatoes and sausages and sauerkraut. Maybe you're not a sauerkraut fan, you haven't had mine yet, uh, then tell me you're not a sauerkraut fan because what you do, uh, when I do it, is uh, I get some bacon frying up and then I uh, chop up that bacon and throw in a few jars of quality sauerkraut and uh, add about a half a bottle of good Alsatian wine and a chopped up apple and a chopped up onion. All of that cooks together uh, along with some caraway uh, for really two and a half hours and it it goes from white to like a caramely brown it cooks down it's delicious so that's going to be along with a sausage and potato choucroute and we also think we're going to make a little snack with my leftover bread kind of a crouton how about an alsatian crouton with comte cheese <laughs> let's see if that works so we will see you this saturday we are happy to see you before that and represent these flights to you but on saturday starting at about 12 30 or or one o'clock in the afternoon Eric and I will be uh, fully prepared to provide you with a plate of choucroute uh, to go along with your Ugel flight. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. And, oh, I guess it goes without saying, maybe it doesn't, but Alsatian wines are the ultimate Thanksgiving wines. They are just beautiful in their fruit. They look sweet, don't they? These are all bone dry wines from Alsace. Now I can say thanks so much for watching. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's see upstairs and down here soon. Hit that cheese cooler. Go looking around for those turkey signs and we'll all be happy this holiday season.